see. <clears throat> Hi, Marianne. I <laughs> just want to say hi to everybody tonight. Um, Pat's still in Ohio, so it's just me tonight. And just want to say hi to everybody online that's come to join us. Let me just turn my brightness down here a second. Display. Okay. It's kind of bright. You don't need to be seeing all that. There we go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you. I've recovered from moving. Hi, Deborah. See who's on here. Deborah and Marianne. Hey, everybody. See my cup here? That's called Merry Camper. That means Sue wants to go camping for Christmas. <laughs> I miss it already. Okay, so <laughs> that's in Ohio. Like I said, let me get this closer to me so you can hear me. Can everybody hear me okay? Sound good? Sound bad? Good? <laughs> Hi, Julianne. Alrighty, so, um, I just wanted to share with, uh, I was kind of waiting to see if anybody else would come on. You know, it really is a season that we have to know that the Lord is present, the Lord is with us, and that we draw from Him. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> it really is a, a time and season to trust the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit knows what He wants to do. He knows what He is doing. And he knows what he will be doing. And so our encouragement every day is we what encourage our souls in Christ. And we encourage one another as well. So I just want to encourage you guys tonight. Because a lot of you guys propped me up this week <laughs> with all the, the stress of moving and, and all the physical labors. But mommy's back. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys that it is it is a new season and it is very obvious to the world that it is a new season and so my message tonight is god what god is doing in this season to bring change and um if you go to sog you probably heard this but i don't think everybody online has <clears throat> and as i was asking the lord lord what do you want me to speak on tonight what's your message for your people lord what do they need to know what do you want them to know what can i say that will make a difference in their life today and so i want to talk about um the rain of the spirit that is falling right now because it's very important if we know what god is doing then we can yield to god in it but we can also have our hope and our faith set in expectation mode because I'm so expecting and I have really pressed in so that my expectation and my hope would be way up there because there's no limits in God there's no limits in his kingdom and if we're living in the kingdom then what if we seek first his kingdom everything that we need will be added to us so if we have our eyes on him, and if we are walking in his kingdom, and living and setting our minds and thoughts on him, Lord, I seek your kingdom today. I seek to do your will, O oh God. And when you focus your faith towards his kingdom that, number one, dwells inside you, but also 
emanates all around you because you carry his kingdom. And so if we are walking in the spirit, we are walking with Jesus, then we're walking in the kingdom on earth and in the spirit. Now I know a lot of people are struggling right now. It is a stressful time because there are a lot of things that are making demands on our time and on our person, on our energy, on our faith. And I want to share a few things to encourage you tonight that began in the month of September when the Lord gave me a series of visitations in September to prepare me for what we're doing in October <laughs> and beyond. So one of the things he began to talk to me was about the reign of his spirit that he is releasing in this hour. And on the 17th of September, in this encounter with the Lord, I began to see in the vision a, a very dry, thirsty land, like kind of like a desert area. And I just began to see dry desert, and the ground was really cracked open. Hi, Gwen. The ground was really cracked, and it was dry. And um, by looking at it, I knew it had been dry for a long, long time. But I saw rain began to fall and began to drop on the dry ground. And I watched this scene. It was so amazing because the rain would hit the dry ground like a desert. And now you guys know that deserts can and dry areas can have no rain for years sometimes. But if it gets a rainstorm, all of a sudden overnight, everything sprouts, flowers blossom, plants grow and it's like a whole different landscape in one day and and some things are really quick and so as i was watching this rain hit the dry ground i understood the lord began to say this is how your words begin to sprout in a new season sometimes you have to wait a long time for my promises to come to pass in your life and sometimes you have to go through a dry spell and a drought and you think that you've missed, you've lost your way, that you got off somewhere and you're lost in the desert. God, do you know where I am? And um, the Lord says, not one of my words ever fail. Sometimes my seeds will lay on the, on the ground like in a desert scene. But when it's time, I will release the rains of my spirit and my seeds will sprout in your life again. You haven't lost nothing. Just because you can't see the activity of your promises doesn't mean nothing's happening. Sometimes God will hold them for a season and he'll make you wait. And I know a lot of us don't want to wait. <laughs> we want it now. And he says, you're not ready now. But we will get the promise and it will be like a seed that he sows in our heart, our spirit, our life. And it will lay dormant because every word from God has a time stamp inside of that seed. And there's a, a life cycle of that seed. And those things will activate as soon as the right conditions are met. In the natural, it could be heat, light, water air you know we have our basic needs but faith at the right season faith will sprout all those seeds uh, as it receives the rain from god's spirit and so i saw the the rain hitting those seeds and i heard this i heard the lord's voice get this guys the lord spoke and he said nothing has failed of the good word of the Lord. See, he said, see, Sue, look in this vision. The rains have begun to form again. Encourage my mighty men. Sue, encourage my mighty men. Encourage them to get up and to rise in faith again. And so that's why I'm doing this tonight, because God is concerned that we won't, that we'll give up. And you guys are the mighty men. You're not to give up. You're to get up. <laughs> you had to get up and fight and stand and say, no, we're not quitting. We're not going to lose hope. We're not going to give in to fear and depression. No, 
We are going to stand firm in our faith. And so he said, nothing has failed of my words. And he said, sometimes you have to wait for a long time. And he said, it's not your fault that you have to wait. Sometimes you're ready for it. But the ones that are around you might not be ready for what God's going to do. And you have to wait for those people around you to get ready before it'll come to pass. And a lot of it, and a good example would be the Old Testament prophets that had to give the word of the Lord to people, to leaders, to whole cities, and they gave the promises and they spoke the oracles of God. But then they had to wait, the prophets had to wait, till God worked throughout all the hearts and minds and lives of the people they spoke to before that promise came to pass. And so sometimes we get discouraged because we think we've done something wrong. We've missed it. Um, what did we do, God? But it's all timing. There's a time stamp in every seed. And so I wanted to share a couple things tonight. The Lord took me to Joshua 23, verse 14, if you guys want to turn there in your Bible. And I always speak out of the Amplified Bible, so I'll read mine for you. It says here <clears throat> in Joshua 23, he says, Behold this day. I am going the way of all the earth. I'm going to die. I'm going to leave you guys. But I want you to know in your hearts and in your souls that not one of all the good things that the Lord your God has promised concerning you all have come to pass for you. He reminded them because he was going home. And he said, guys, you have to root this fact in your heart and in your soul because none of the promises that God told me in my lifetime ever failed. They all came to pass. And he said, and now it's your turn to believe for your promises that not one good word of the Lord, not one God-given word to you, if you will stay in faith, will ever fail. We don't know the timing when God will do them, but when everything is right. And I always, one thing I always say when I get a promise or a prophecy or something like that, the first thing I do, hi dad, <clears throat> hi Tom, first thing I do is I always say, Lord, make me ready for your promise. Make me ready for the prophecies you have for my life. Make me ready for the future of what you called me to. Make me ready for truth and revelation. Lord, make me ready so that I am ready. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> and so it's really key, and the way you get ready is you yield to the Holy Spirit every day, sometimes a thousand times a day. Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Lord, I yield in my thoughts, I yield in my heart, I yield in my words, I yield in my life. Lord, make me ready so that your words that you sowed into me can come to pass right on time. So an example, a good illustration of people that um, think that you're going to die in the desert <laughs> And that your promises will never come to pass. And he's like, Lord, do you even know what's happening to me? Okay, let me see if I can find this. Because Pat's not here tonight. And I did find it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so a good example of someone that is in the desert and thinks their life is over. And situations are so bad and that they're just going to lay down and die. I quit. It's too hard. I give up. We can never give up because Jesus didn't give up. He went to the cross and died for us. He paid the price. And now we pick up our cross every day and we follow him. And we yield and trust him even if we don't understand because he's already walked it out for us. And we can trust 
that he will get us to our destination. So if you go to Genesis 16, in the story of Sarah and Hagar, they didn't get along very well. And um, Hagar was kicked out because she had an attitude and she was kicked out of Sarah's out tent. And she went wandering in the wilderness, in the desert with her son. And she, and she said, Lord, I'm gonna go out here and just die. Nothing's happening in my life, everything's wrong. I have no future, I don't have a hope. And God sent an angel to her in the desert, in that dry place. And he asked her, what are you doing there? <laughs> this is Sue's version of the Amplified Version. <laughs> And he said, what are you doing here? And um, she said, I'm running away from my mistress. I'm running away from my problems. I'm running away from my circumstances. I'm tired of the warfare. I'm tired of the fighting. I just want to die. And the angel said, get up. What are you doing? He said, you have a future. And he began to tell her her future. He began to tell her about her children and about all the things they would do um, after her. And it sparked that faith, that vision, that hope for a future in her. And she said, verse 13, this, I love this so much. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Peggy. Good to see you guys. She said, she called on the name of the Lord who spoke to her, and she said, you are a God of seeing. For have I not here in this wilderness looked upon him who sees me, and yet I live? Or have I seen here also the future purposes or designs of him that sees me? God is releasing fresh rain right now from his spirit, a refreshing rain that's full of hope, of faith, of strength, of life, of encouragement. The reign of his spirit gives you liberty and freedom. But that reign must be received in your heart and especially up here in your mind because that's where the battles are and that's where discouragement and depression and fear want to root in here to create a stronghold over you. And you have to allow the Holy Spirit, Lord, release your rain on my brain. Release your rain, Lord. Soften the soil of my hard head <laughs> so that your word can come to pass instead. God has a future for you and a plan and a purpose. And my one of my favorite verses for speaking the future, if you go to Luke chapter 1, I think it's one. Let me see here. Yeah. When Zechariah was in the tabernacle praying, and um, the Lord visited him, and it kind of freaked him out when he was offering um, at the altar. And the Lord came and said, I've come to give you some good news. And he said, even though you've had to wait a long, long time in your hundred years old it's never too late the rain's coming again you're not dead and dry and you're not gonna die even though you might feel like it <laughs> he said no you're gonna give birth and the angel said don't be afraid your prayers have been heard everything's ready remember sometimes you have to wait your seeds have to lay dormant not because you have done anything wrong, but because the people around you that are going to be affected by your life have to be ready. If they're not ready for you, they won't be able to receive from you. And you're called to reach them. And if they don't hear you, then they're not going to be reached. Hi, Lisa. So, Zachariah had a choice. And the angel told him, you're dead and dry, you've been in the desert so long, but you're about to give birth. You're going to produce a new sprout. 
And he said, are you kidding? Our machines don't work. We can't conceive. It's not your body that has to believe. It's your heart. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord. And when you hear it, it's not how old you are physically. How old are you in the spirit? There's no age in the spirit. You're not limited in your spirit, man. And when God says, it's time, I'm going to rain on you and you're going to birth something new. Then he kind of, he doubted. And God said, fine, you're not going to speak another word until it comes to pass. And the biggest reason why he couldn't speak it is so that he wouldn't negate the word. And he also wouldn't speak death over the seed when the rains hit it because the seed had to come forth and grow. And that was Christ, right? It's all through John. It's all through Jesus. Mary had the same opportunity. It's raining, guys, in the spirit. Don't curse your words. Don't curse your seeds. Don't curse them by being negative. So the angel said, I stand in the very presence of God. I give you this word and you doubt, you're not going to be able to speak now because you did not believe. In the time of rain, you can be in a crowd of people enjoying the rain and you're standing there dry. Why is that? If the rain is falling on everybody, but you're not getting the refreshing of the spirit, why is that? Are you in unbelief? Are you in fear? Are you in doubt? Uh, have you just quit? Have you decided your promises are over? They will never come to pass? You might as well not talk anymore. Because God is moving. And it's time. And we have to understand all you have to do is say yes. Yes, God. Yes. It doesn't matter if you've messed up in the past. It matters that you say yes right now. Okay. But the interesting fact that I want to get to is when the angel said, you can't speak now, Zechariah, until the day these things come to pl take pa place. It's in verse 20 of Luke 1. Because you have not believed what I told you. But, B-U-T, says, my words, Zechariah, the angel speaking to him, my words are of a kind. A specific kind which will be fulfilled in the appointed and proper time there are words that come from God that release rain that release the the presence of God to germinate the seeds that have laid dormant waiting for the rain the angel said my words are of that kind of a specific kind and I said, what kind, Lord? He said, my words have the power within them to come to pass. They are self-fulfilling. And all you have to do is yield and believe until the time I come to do them. He said, they will be fulfilled at the appointed and proper time. But what time is it, guys? It's 12 o'clock. The clock has stuck 12. And it's time. For the manifest presence of God. It's already happening. God is beginning to move everywhere. But he said, but my reign is here. Will you receive my reign this year? Will you receive healing? Will you receive nourishment? Will you receive encouragement? Will you receive my love, my peace, my joy? Will you receive it? So then he goes to Mary. And he begins to, he said, don't be afraid again. I have a message for you. <laughs> and she goes, well, how can this be? I, I don't know a man. I haven't been in that situation before. And he said, no, no, you don't get it. It's in the spirit. It comes from the spirit. God is going to birth this. You won't have to do it. Guys, you cannot do enough to produce what God is beginning to do. You might as well surrender. You might as well yield. This is not the work of a man. This is not something you can produce on your own. He said the Holy Spirit is going to come on you. 
and the power of the Most High <laughs> is going to overshadow you like a shining cloud. What's in clouds? Rain. The rain of His presence just begins to rain on you. And it begins to overshadow you. And it begins to overshadow the seeds and the promises that are in you. And those seeds that are in you begin to sprout because God's germinating them by the power of His Spirit. His overshadowing clouds are producing rain. Because it's time. And He said, and you and the things I do through you are going to be pure and spotless because they're born of the Son of God. They're not born of you. Power comes from God. Power doesn't come from man. And God is ready to rain on your seeds. So again, you guys that are coming in late, I've been sharing on this vision. I've been having some encounters and several, and we're going to talk about them tonight. And I saw this vast dry ground. And there was nothing. It was dead, dry. The ground was cracked. And it looked hopeless. But I saw rain begin to fall from heaven. And I watched. And as I watched, seeds begin to bust out of, bust everywhere and blossom and bloom. Kind of like the desert does when you get a storm. Everything blooms the next day. It doesn't take long. You just have to wait for the rain. But the Lord said to me in the vision, he said this audibly in the vision. He said, nothing that has failed of my good word, the good word of the Lord, nothing has failed. Nothing. You guys, nothing has failed. Stop looking around hopeless. This is it. We're toast. We're not toast. Nothing of the good word of the Lord has ever failed. Ever. He said, see, look, Sue, see, the rains have begun to fall. They're beginning to form again. Sue, encourage my mighty men, you women and men. He told me, encourage you. He said, Sue, encourage my mighty men to get up and to rise up in faith again. I don't care if you prayed for 30 years for something. Look, pray and go look again, because we're in a new season, a season of manifestation. He said, I'm moving. He said, ask me for the rain in the time, in the season of the rains. And he said, you are in the season, the beginning of the season of my rains on the earth again. And I am raining. I am raining on my people right now. And one of the things that I love about God's rain, let's see, Bella tease. Oops, hang on, I can't type heaven born. If you look up, what is the rain? Let's go to Isaiah 45, 8. And look at that. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Everybody, Peggy, and everybody at the house of prayer. All right, Isaiah 45, 8. It says, Let fallen showers, you heavens from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. What is that? The pure, spiritual, heaven-born possibilities that have their foundation in the holy being of God. The things that God has planned, that he has written for you, that he has dreamed about and longed for you, that are set in your time stamp of your life, those heaven-born possibilities are still there waiting for and it says this, that the, it's now falling in showers from heaven to the earth. The skies are raining down righteousness because righteousness is what sprouts everything. 
And he said, let the earth open. You guys, what are you made of? Dirt and water, right? <laughs> Your earth has to open. You have to yield. You have to surrender. You have to say yes. And open and say, Lord, release the rain. I'll take the heaven-born possibilities that are in you. Lord, rain them down in my life. Rain them on my brain. Rain them in my life, Jesus. I yield to your timing right now. And it says, let the earth open and let them, the skies and the earth, both sprout forth salvation. And let righteousness germinate and spring up as plants do together. Because I, the Lord, have created it. Who's doing it? Not us. We can't produce life on our own. The enemy can't produce life. The only one that gives us life is Jesus Christ. And all we have to do is position ourselves and say, Here I am, Jesus. Here's my funnel. And he said, You're in the season of my reign. Recognize it. Ask me for the rain. Ask. If we ask, he said, Will I not give it to you? Ask in this season. Lord, release your reign in my life. Everything that is stored up for me. Everything that is possible. Everything that you have even thought of that I haven't thought of. And everything that's available, God, for us now. Release the rain and make us ready for it, Lord. So he said, ask. So let's go to Zechariah 10. Let's look at that for a minute. For I'm getting so excited for my own message. <laughs> You're so good to us, Jesus. You know, Jesus really is excited. He loves the seasons of the rain because he loves to show you how much he loves you and how much you can trust him to work everything out. Zechariah 10 verse 1 says, Ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter or spring rain. Well, there's an early rain and a latter rain. There's a spring rain and a fall rain. And if you know it's raining, then Lord say, Lord, here I am, rain on me. It is the Lord. That makes the lightnings which usher in the rain and give men showers and grass to everyone in the field. He knows what we need. And if we know the season and we know the reason, then we're good to go. All I do is yield. Say, here I am, Lord. Whatever you want, I'm willing. Let her rip. Because that's why we're here, right? To display the glory of God. To display His love. To display His goodness. Now, so then, I saw, that was on the 17th. And then on the 19th, the Lord said again to me, He said, ask me for the rains to fall upon your seeds, specifically. He knows when to water your seeds. He knows when to water your plants, right? He said, Ask me for the rains to fall upon your seeds and look unto my hand. Whose hand? His hand. I am faithful to my words and trust that I know what I have planned. Stand firm in your faith. I say again, look to me and stand. See, God knows what he's planned. We don't have to worry what men have planned, what the devil's planned, what our enemies planned. It's more important to know what God has planned. Because remember, you're sent on to this earth to fulfill his purpose. And you have an assignment. So why would we worry about what other people have planned? All we have to focus on is, Lord, what have you planned? What have you planned for me and what have you planned for today? And today is all I have to worry about because each day I fulfill his will. I just stay in faith. Okay, so he said to ask him again, you guys. And I said, Lord, where does the rain fall? 
And he said, the first place my rain will fall in you is in your thoughts. I fall in your thoughts. Why? Because that's where the dead dry ground often is in us, guys. Our battlefields, our battles are in our minds. And sometimes God has to rain on our brain to soften that soil, to get all the weeds out, to get all the stuff out that's hindering the birthing. And so he will come and nurture you. He'll come and encourage you. He'll come and say, just yield, Sue. Just yield, Sue. <laughs> Trust me again. I know what I'm doing. One day I was really frustrated with God, <laughs> frustrated with life, with everything that's going on. And I was feeling the pressure. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and he quietly, he said, but I do. <laughs> and when he said that, it like it broke the circumstances. It just shattered it. And I stopped dead in my tracks. And I said, yes, you do. <laughs> Tell me what I have to do. And he did. Boom, boom, boom. And everything was fine. See, we just have to, to realize. Whoops, sorry. I just kicked you guys. We have to realize God really does know what is happening and what he wants to do every step of our day. We just have to ask, Lord, what? I don't get it, but I trust you. Even if I don't get it, I yield, Lord. So let's go to 1 Kings, 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings, get back here. There you are. Elijah, we all know this story. The pressure was on. He was praying. He had been in a lot of different challenges. He had just fought the devil and won the battle. <laughs> he was praying. And the Lord began to fill his heart. And he began to get the burden of the Lord. And some of you have been praying in the cave for a long, long time. Thinking, Lord, how can your rain get in the cave? It doesn't rain in caves, God. But here I'm stuck and I can't get out. All you got to do is ask for the rain in the season of the rain. And all of a sudden you'll find it raining in your cave. <laughs> you'll find that the cloud, remember those heaven-born possibilities that have their being in God, they form a cloud and that Shekinah glory brings it to your life. And all of a sudden it begins to rain and releases that righteousness that sprouts salvation in your mind, in your thoughts, in your life. So he prayed and he kept praying. In verse 40, let's see, 42, Elijah went up to the top and he bowed himself on the earth and he put his face between his knees. And he said, I'm not getting up to go look. I'm staying in prayer. You go look for me. And he prayed, kept praying, and the servant came back and said, Nothing's happening. And he said, Fine. So he kept praying. Servant, go out and look again. Servant goes out, sees nothing, comes back, Nothing's happening. And people say, How long are you going to keep praying, Pat and Sue? How long are you going to be keep believing God to change Rochester? How long are you going to quote those prophecies you've been quoting for 25 years? As long as it takes. But when the cloud comes and it starts to rain, you better start running. Because God's on the move. It doesn't matter how long it takes. What matters is the timing. Everything is right on time. And so the seventh time he goes out. And the servant comes back and says, Wow, well, Pat and Sue, I see a little cloud. And it's, a, it's the size of a hand. And he understood timing. Bam! Get up and move. God's hand is here. And that cloud brought rain. And the first drops of rain began to fall. And he said, get in your chariot and run. He said, if not, you're going to get stuck in a mud puddle somewhere because the rain's going to be heavy. <laughs> and you guys got to realize 
it's a new season. Doesn't matter how dark it is or how hard it is or how, how much the devil's pounding you or your boss or your, your government leader. It doesn't matter. Who has your future in his hands? Jesus does. So, that was the second time. Let me turn my page here. Now, let me get it. Part three, my third encounter. <laughs> let me um, turn the page a second. It's being slow. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Get this. I think my phone would be faster than this one is. Okay. Hmm. Let me see here. So the other night on October 1st, I was laying down. It was in the morning. And I saw this angel. He was descending. Because when you're in the spirit, I, I often, um, either right before I fall asleep or just before I wake up, I'll have these encounters as, a, as my mind lets go and I begin to, to drift off into the spirit and sleep. The Lord will visit me and, and this angel I saw coming. And he had this blue flowing fabric um, outfit on. It was like chiffon. It was it was blue, but it had layers, but it was um, glistening. And I looked at it, but I saw that there was raindrops like suspended in the fabric of his garment. And I knew that he was being sent to us, all of us, each of us, <laughs> that had been crying out for God's rains to come. Lord, we're, we're reminding you of our promises. We're not letting go. Lord, you said, you told us to remind you, God, of your word, of your promises. You said to not let you go. But Lord, you said to remind you. And so we've been standing firm saying, Lord, we're not letting go. We're just stubborn enough to root down and say, nope, not moving. It shall come to pass. <laughs> And so I knew this angel who had the rain inside the fabric of his garments. He was one of those that Gabriel talked about. He was one of those that these angels come to release the rain of the Spirit, to release righteousness, to begin to fall on our seeds so that they will sprout in the time. And they come to water your lives. They, they come to water your homes, your families, your city, your church, Wherever you belong to, your business, your state, wherever the hungry and thirsty are crying out to God, Lord, release your rain. Those angels right on time from Jesus, they're sent by him. They come to release the rain so that your promises will germinate now in the time of fruitfulness. So he was answering those who were crying out for God's rains. He was entering on October 1st. He entered into areas and cities and regions where they've been crying out for a release from heaven. And I'm telling you, you better, if you haven't been crying out, say, Lord, you sent that angel on October 1st. And we have been praying and agreeing and decreeing and we're not moving. And we smell the rain in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is pregnant with the possibilities of God. And I can feel the drops. Little here, a little there, a little cloud. But that's all you need. You only need a drop. <laughs> if you have the faith of a side of a mustard seed, that's all you need. But let it grow, right? And this angel is sent on assignment right now to everyone that's been crying out because it's time, T-I-M-E. All you have to do is look up, say, here I am, Papa. <laughs> Release your rain. <laughs> and, 
And then on the second, as I was agreeing with God, right, um, I heard this. It was kind of like a poem in a way. And um, I heard the cry. I heard the hearts and, and lives of people crying out. I could hear their words. And they were saying, Lord, release your reins. Rain on our brains. Rain on our hearts. Rain. Falling within our lives. Lord, release those reins, right? Bring your change. Lord, rearrange. Never the same. Transformation come. They were crying out. But the thing about their words was they had gotten to a point where they realized their minds their hearts and their lives needed the rain. And they were crying it out. And you guys can read this on my wall because I did post this. And they said, Lord, you bring the change. Your change. And see, this is what we got to begin to ask God for. It's not the change you want or I want or our government wants or politicians want or even what the church wants. We have to be dry and thirsty and hungry enough to say, Lord, bring your change. What you have kept in your heart for all these thousands of years, God, the heaven-born possibilities that are stored up in your being, Lord, release that change. Those changes, release that. Lord, you rearrange we can't make things the way we want them, guys. And you and you definitely are not going to be comfortable in a season of rain because that rain will stretch you. Why? To let go. To let go and let God. Let God blow you right out of the water. Because <laughs> he will. <laughs> and after he rearranges, they said, never the same transformation come. See, when there's a cry like that, Heaven responds and earth responds because that is what God is looking for. He's looking for faith, but he's looking for persistent faith. So then I heard the Spirit hears you and agrees because I heard their cries and then I heard the Lord's cries. And the Lord, and this is what I heard, his rains have come. Receive the Son. He is the rain, isn't he? His hand shall be seen on the horizon, on the horizon, on this horizon, this horizon. See, we are, you are the lampstand, you are the altar, you are every piece of the tabernacle, you are the living tents. And God wants to broaden your horizon and expand your understanding so that you understand you're in a new season, guys. You're not in the same season. And God's moving you guys. God's moving a lot of you geographically. And you're having to move to new places you've never been. And you're having to pioneer all over again. Ask me, that's not fun? I've done that many times. <laughs> I've had to move so many times and pioneer all over again. It's like, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. Let somebody else pioneer. Let somebody else plow. Let somebody else fight. But you know, God knows you're important because you're the ones he trusts when no one else would go and, and, and plant and sow in faith and plow and give and die in faith. He'll call you. Why? Because you are important because he knows you'll be faithful to do it. And a lot of people disobey. They tell God they'll do it, but they don't. And God knows that. And he's offering it to you guys. That's why you're watching tonight. That's why you're watching. Why do you think God has you watching? Because, and some people, like us, currently, we're just not moving geographically. Well, we are, but we're more, more or less moving a thousand feet that way and then up. <laughs> so we're moving to a second floor. In a mall, because the Lord says, I'm taking my people higher. I'm taking them to the upper room. I'm taking them. Jeremiah 33, 3. I want you to come up here. I want to show you great things. I want to show you what I think. I want to show you what I want to do. I need you to agree with me so I can release the rain as they cry out to me. God needs you. 
So let's go. Let's go look at Jeremiah 33 3. Because that's kind of where we're moving to. Jeremiah 33 3. Actually, let's start at verse 1. This is really good. So the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, right? Hi, Pam. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Janine. I'm trying to catch up with everybody here. And he was in a dry place. He was in jail. He's sitting there in jail. He thought he failed. He was sitting there in jail. Nothing's happening. As a matter of fact, it's all shut down. And... Um, He's sitting there, but the word of the Lord came to him saying, you know, just when you think you're at the end and you can't go forward anymore and you can't go backwards, you're stuck and nothing's happening. Hi, Elizabeth. The word came saying, thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 33, verse 2. Who made heaven and the earth. The Lord who formed it to establish it. You know, if God forms our planet to establish his word, he's not going to nuke our planet. He's not going to destroy it before his word comes to pass. We have times, time left, guys. We're not at the end. <laughs> There's a lot of his words that still have to be fulfilled. Chill out. God knows what he's doing. Okay, so thus saith the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. He's saying this to his prophet. He wasn't saying it to a young Christian that didn't know him. He said, call to me, Jeremiah. Ask me for the rain. <laughs> call to me, Jeremiah, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. Things that are fenced in and hidden right now so that you can't understand it or see it. Things you don't know. Things you do not distinguish and recognize. Have knowledge of or understand. All those things that lie hidden that you can't comprehend. Call to me in the time of rain and I will rain on your brain. And all of a sudden, boom, revelation will sprout. Because he said, it's time, Jeremiah. You need it as much as my people do. I have a future for you. I'm going to tell you what your nation is going to go through. I'm going to tell you what the future of your people are. Because you have a future and a purpose. And so Jeremiah was in this crisis point. But he was right on point. Because he was right where God wanted him to be so he could speak to him clearly okay so this one of the things that really struck me about the rain because rain is a lot of things in scripture but i want to you to go to first corinthians 2 verse 16 Actually, let's go to I just love 1 Corinthians 2. It's talking about natural language and spiritual language. How to understand the language of the Spirit. But if you go to verse 10 He just got done talking to Jeremiah, which we just read in Jeremiah 33, 1-3 Jeremiah, there's a lot of things, even as a prophet, that you don't understand that are hidden, that are that I have clothed, clothed with darkness so you don't get it because it's not time. There, hi, Janine. There has to be a time. Remember, every word from God has a time stamp in it. So in verse 10, God is unveiling and revealing things to us by and through His Spirit. For the Holy Spirit will search out everything diligently, exploring, examining everything, even sounding the profound bottomless things of God. Remember those heaven-born spiritual um, possibilities that are waiting? 
What do you think the Holy Spirit is searching all those things out going, there, that is, I found it, God, that's what they're waiting for. See, the Holy Spirit knows what we need, when we need it, and how we're going to seed it. He knows. And so he gets them from the Father and then he births them. He gives us the power to birth them in the earth. He explores all those things in God, the divine counsels and those things hidden and beyond our scrutiny. Even if you don't understand it, guys, it don't matter. You don't have to. The Holy Spirit understands it. All you have to do is receive the rain and he will sprout it. And you will understand as it emerges out of the soil, as it comes up, the Holy Spirit will show you why you had to wait. Now, he said, he said, I'm setting these truths in words not by taught by human wisdom, verse 13, but taught by the Spirit. God's teaching you something tonight in this message. He's combining and interpreting spiritual truth and spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is explaining these things, I'm telling you. And you guys are getting it. It's quickening you because you understand by the power of the Holy Spirit. It says the natural man is not going to figure it out. If you get in your head, everything I say, you're going to say, this is stupid. This don't make sense. What's she talking about? But if you yield to the Holy Spirit, he'll say, this is what you've been asking me. I'm showing you how it works so that you can receive it. So, verse 16, what I wanted to get to. The rain that's falling. The heaven-born possibilities that have their being in God. Things hidden that he wants us to to receive in the time when it's being given and then jeremiah says it's right now jeremiah you don't get it but i'm going to come up here i want to show you so you can get it we're in that season revelation it's not just revelation it's impartation for manifestation god is giving it helping us connect so we can produce it says, for who has known or understood the mind and the counsels and purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge? No one. <laughs> but we, you and me, have the mind of Christ. Those heaven-born possibilities that are in God the Father's being. Jesus knows. We have the mind of Christ, and we hold in here the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of his heart. That's where the rain sprouts. And you might be saying right now, I don't know God's thoughts. I don't feel God. I don't even know God had feelings. I don't know his purpose and the plans. I can't even figure out my own life. This is right where you're supposed to be because you're listening tonight. God doesn't want you to be frustrated. He doesn't want you to be angry. He doesn't want you to struggle. He wants you to have hope and faith and trust in him, knowing you're right where you are. And he sees you just like Hagar saw him. And she said, you are the God that sees me in this desert. <laughs> you know what I'm going through. But you know my future. You just showed me in that vision, Hagar said, all of my kids and what they're going to do in the future. You're the God that sees me and lives. An unbelieving person had an encounter with the living God and he showed her her future. It's not hard. But he met her right on time. And he met Jeremiah in the prison. You're not dead, Jeremiah. You're not done. You have a voice yet. You still have to release my words, my revelation to my people so that they can rise. So they can stand in faith and say, come God. That's the prophet's purpose is to inspire you guys 
You're the one that's going to do the works of ministry. You're the one that's going to move in power. You guys are the ones that are going to birth all the seeds that God has planned for the earth. We're not done. we got time. But he wants you to know the season and the reason, and it's raining. And so all you got to do is take a deep breath and say, Jesus, rain. Release your rain inside of me. Release your rain inside my brain, inside my heart, inside my life, inside my body, inside my home. Lord, bring your rain. And he said he will. And God wants you to understand he knows your feelings. He knows your struggles, your thoughts. He knows your plans. He knows them better than you do because he wrote them for you. You're just becoming aware of them. But there's so much more. God, not one of God's words have ever failed. Joshua told his children and all his families and his people. He's laying on his deathbed. And he said, hey guys, I'm going home. But I want you to know God's faithful. And not one of his words shall fail to come to pass. And he went home. And they had to believe that. And they had to look to God the same as Joshua did. Because every generation has to receive their revelation. And your revelation isn't like the last one. And your revelation of what God's about to do isn't like the book of Acts. God never repeats the same thing twice. God's doing something brand new in the earth. And it has to do with you. Because the kingdom of God that is in you is about to break out of you. The kingdom of God that is in you is about to break out of you. Because the kingdom is here. <laughs> oh, I'm getting drunk. <laughs> ah. Okay. So the Lord said to me on the 20, let's see, 28. 28. There's the next one. He said, There is a resounding cry in the heavens, and there is a cry rising in the earth. See? Heaven and earth. Calling out at the same time. It's timing. And he said, would I not answer it? Would I not bring forth a harvest of great worth? God is more desirous than you are. Would not God answer you? Of course he will. I will answer it in my faithfulness. I will answer it with my truth. And I will plant my righteousness everywhere. And my people will surely abound all around. <laughs> because see, God is looking for good ground. He's looking for ground that will receive his rain. And all those heaven-born possibilities that have been waiting in the heart of God. The atmosphere is pregnant, guys. Have you ever been outside and the atmosphere was so heavy you knew it was going to rain because you could feel it? There was so much moisture in the air. It was like just about ready to burst. And that's God's heart right now. It's about ready to burst because that's where his rain comes from. It's the rain of his righteousness, right? We just read it in the scriptures. And that's how he brings salvation is because of his righteousness. That's what sets us free, right? He said, I'm answering you in my faithfulness. I'm answering you with truth. My, I will plant my righteousness everywhere. And where does he start planting? First in your heart, then in your mind, in your life, and then through you, he plants all around you. You want things to change? Don't try to change things yourself. You just keep promotion, you'll just keep producing Ishmael's. You'll keep producing regrets and struggles. Just say, Lord, just like Mary, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me, God, 
according to your word. And Elizabeth, as soon as Mary came and visited her, he said, Blessed are you who have believed the report of the Lord. Blessed are you who believed there would be a fulfillment of what the Lord had spoken to her. I believe there will be a fulfillment of what God has spoken to me. And that's all that's required is faith. That's all that's required. Just yield. Say, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And right now his word is, ask me for the rain. Right now in the season of rain. Ask me, children. Lord, come and rain. Release your rain in my life, in my mind, in my heart, in my life, in my home, in my church. Lord, release your rain. And as soon as we do, God, his heart goes, Woo! I can do it. They're ready. They're ready. And he sends the angels to announce the birth. And I have to tell you, because I haven't written it out yet. But last week I was in the House of Prayer for All Nations in Chicopee, Massachusetts. And I think Peggy's watching. Um, the last day we had six sessions in three days. <laughs> And that last session, the final night, at the very end of six sessions, it took God to plant something in us. At the very end. And I, I'm, what I'm about to tell you is no lie. You guys know me. I don't lie. I don't, I've been in this long enough. I don't mess around. And if God sends them, I believe it. But it was so powerful. At the end of the sixth session, because we were talking about the seeds in the rain, what you guys are getting in mini form, they got in six meetings. And at the end, I was standing there, and all of a sudden, whoa! <laughs> all of a sudden, Gabriel came, and I felt him in the spirit. And the presence of God that emanated from was so strong, I was weeping and crying and shaking <laughs> in the meeting. And Tammy, you were there. And, um, it was so powerful. I still have to write out what he said, but the basic gist of it was God's looking for faith right now because he's come to give birth again. He's come to give birth in men. And he wants to plant his seed in you. And he wants to rain on you. And he's looking for faith. And will we say yes? And will we let him birth through us again? And I was weeping so much. <laughs> Because the presence of God was so strong. And I looked over at Pastor Kim and he was shaking. <laughs> His microphone was going like this. Because it was so incredible how God, when we're faithful to keep speaking His words, He will come with the confirmation to agree and to unite with our faith that it is time. It's, it is time. And... Um, so it was very powerful for me that um, at this different special times when the angels come to say, yes, this is what it is. Move now. And then, um, so I knew all we have to do is yield. All we have to do in order is just receive the rain. I told God, Lord, I don't know. I don't know what you want to do, but Lord, I will do whatever you want to do. I don't care what I look like as you transform me. All I know is I want to be like you. And I said, Lord, come with your reign. Come and change us. Come and rearrange us. Come and do what you want to do. Be who you are to us and through us. Lord, make us new. Lord, make us like you. Lord, we're hungry. Lord, we're thirsty. Lord, we're, we're distraught and we're confused and we're feeling the pressure and we're tired and we don't know what to do. We don't know which way to go and what choice to make. But Lord, you know. <laughs> because you created us, God. And Lord, all we have to do is ask you. 
Like I said earlier, I didn't know what to do. I, my back was against the wall. I was feeling the pressure, Lord. And I just said, Lord, I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, the still small voice said, but I do. Ask me. I know what to do. Trust me. Just yield. I will guide you and lead you all the way through. And all the fear left me, all the discouragement, the frustration, everything just vanished. Because I said, Lord, my hope is in you and I trust you. I give it to you. I trust you. And all of a sudden this flood of the grace and the glory and the peace of God just filled me that I didn't have any more fear. I didn't feel no pressure, no weight, no concern, no frustration. It left. I felt God. And one of the things, and Janine, I can see, I can't read everything you're writing, but one of the things I can say to you right now is fear is like a weed. Fear, depression, um, anxiousness, anxiety, stress. If you read in the parable of the sower in the book of Mark, it says the cares of this world and the pressures of this life come and choke the seeds. They choke it to where we can't see God, we can't feel God, we can't hear God, we can't feel nothing, and we get really dry. And all of a sudden we're all clogged up. But he said the good ground, he said, will open up and I will rain on you and I will remove all the weeds. See, you can't remove your weeds. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But you can acknowledge them. Lord, come, Father, and remove worry, remove doubt, remove fear, remove the, the clogged upness we have, God, the struggles, the frustration, the pressure. Lord, we yield to you because it's a work only you can do. But Lord, we ask that you would come, even right now, with your peace. Lord, release your rain tonight, right now. Release your rain of your presence. Release, Lord, right now, over every heart, every mind, all bodies, our bodies. They feel the effect of stress, too. Lord, release right now from your presence. Well, I can feel that. Lord, we just open. We open our ground to your reign. We say yes. And Lord, we ask that you would lift every care, every burden, all pressure, all distractions, all weights, all stress, all trauma, all drama. <laughs> In your presence, we are being changed, Lord. And in your presence is our life. And in your presence is all the answers to all of our questions. And we give you permission, Holy Spirit, to take them out of us tonight. To extract those things that block our seeing, that block our hearing, that block our feeling and our sensing you. Holy Spirit, come, we invite you. Come and do your work. Remove those chains. Remove the restrictions. Remove, Lord, those things that hinder us, that frustrate us. Holy Spirit, we ask for the rain. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit, set us free tonight. Unlock our senses so that we can hear. We can hear your voice, Lord, speaking. Lord, Release the rain to flush out those things that are in the way, that block us up, and that prevent for our seeds from sprouting within us. Release your rain, Lord. Release that your presence come more. Just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath right now. Release your presence, Lord. In your presence is life. In your presence is hope. In your presence is liberty and freedom and release and peace. In your presence is fullness of joy. 
In your presence is strength. In your presence is healing. Just take another deep breath. I smell the rain. <laughs> It's a new season. Don't be afraid. Trust the Holy Spirit. He knows what way you are to go. He knows if you are to stay where you are or move. He knows if you are to stay where you are or move on. Don't be afraid of the future. He is your future. <laughs> he wrote your life. And your life comes from him. And he will take care of you. And he will support you. All you have to do is follow his voice. Trust him. I feel right now some of you are afraid to trust God. You're afraid to trust his voice. You're afraid. It's fear. The spirit of fear. He said, trust. He said, would I not answer my people that cry out to me? Yes, he's answering you right now. Don't be afraid to trust the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid to trust Jesus with your life. Don't be afraid. He's, he says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. A plan for a future and a hope. So you wouldn't be discouraged and not for disaster. Not for failure. God's plans for you. You have a future and it's bright. Why is it bright? Because he's your light. It doesn't matter how dark it is in the world. Guess what? The world is dark. The world is shrouded in darkness. It is bound. It's controlled by the spirit of fear. You are the light. And darkness can't comprehend light. And your light is greater than the darkness that's around you because you're on assignment you're called to light up the room you are the light bulbs of the Holy Spirit and that darkness can't get in unless you let it but you are the messenger to all those around you people watch you they're looking for answers and they're looking at your life seeing can I see the answer in her life they're looking for someone that will give them hope that will give them courage, that will give them faith, that will stir them. <laughs> That's my job, kids. So my message is to you is don't doubt, don't be afraid. Lord, you have the answers for my life, for my circumstance, my situation I'm going through right now. I don't know what to do, God. But Lord, help me. I ask for your help. I ask for my supply that is written on my scroll. And I ask for your rain. And I ask, Lord, that the angels that are around me will help me. And they will clear out all the obstacles around me so that I can see, that I can hear, that I can feel, and I can know what you're calling me to do. Lord, I hear your word tonight. I feel your spirit tonight. You are my future. You are my hope. And because of you, I can look forward, excited for the new that you're going to do. Because I stay positioned in faith in you. I do not waver in my faith. I do not waver in my faith. Sometimes I have a moment where my flesh might waver. Or my mind might say, I, I, I don't know if this is it. But my heart says, no, the word of the Lord cannot fail to come to pass. It doesn't matter what I think. And it doesn't matter what I think it's going to be or not be. It matters that I believe in him who spoke it. And if he spoke it for you and over you, and he did, because that's why you're here, then he's faithful to keep you. He's faithful to supply you. And he's faithful to bring you into the fullness of what he's planned for you. And he wants you to delight yourself in him. He wants you. To delight yourself in Him. Choose joy. Even in a dark season. It says we are to choose joy. We are to rejoice. We are to give thanks, right? 
So I'm telling you guys, you don't need an umbrella. You need to get out there in the rain and say, Lord, bring the rain. <laughs> bring the rain, Lord. Because you're planting seeds again. We're giving birth. The harvest is, it's unlocking everywhere. God has fires everywhere. God's moving everywhere. But he wants you to jump in. He wants you to be a part of what he's doing right now in this season. I've had some powerful encounters. I haven't had time. I had one this morning that just shook me to no end. And I'll probably try and take time to do a FaceTime, Facebook Live on that tomorrow. But everything is ready, guys. Everything is ready. The darkness cannot comprehend or overpower the light. Actually, your light puts darkness to flight. Your light torments darkness. And it doesn't matter how much the devil rages. He's already finished. He's already lost. Because we understand the word. And we get the privilege of walking out that word and seeing the powerful things God's about to do. He is doing, he's about to do, and he will do even through you. You guys. Take another drink. Say, Jesus, I'm thirsty. Jesus, satisfy my heart. Satisfy my mind. Jesus, come. Set me free. Jesus, strengthen me. Jesus, change me. Because that's why we're here, God. Fill us up brand new. So I pray this message encourages you. You know I love you guys. Mom's always here. And I'll be back probably tomorrow night because I want to share my other encounter with you that I had this morning. If, you, if our ministry has blessed you and you want to be a partner, monthly partner with us, there's links on there how you can do it if you just feel led to sow a seed and you want to bless us for giving you the word, that's fine. You guys know how to give. It's on my wall. It's in this link in the video. But guys, plant your seeds in God. Wherever he tells you to give, sow your seed wherever he tells you to give plant by faith and watch what God will do for you. I love you guys. There's a big hug, big kiss. Don't quit. Stand up and fight because look again, this is it. The rains have begun to fall. 